Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Maybe you could kick off with a brief introduction to this amazing film, Tim, T-I-M. I don't know how you're pronouncing it. Um, and what can people expect when they watch it? Wow, okay. So um, I say Tim. Tim. It probably is technically T-I-M, but I say Tim. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, so it's, 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 it's basically a stalker thriller, but with an AI as the stalker. Uh, it's about a woman called Abby, and she has she's a she's a prosthetic scientist, and she's making a robot arm for um for this new AI man servant, and um she uh, she basically gets given one for free as a, as a perk of the job, and uh, the idea is that Tim starts to become slightly obsessed with her. And, and I don't want to get too much away. If you uh, want if you want to see what happens throughout the whole film, just watch the trailer. That's how trailers are these days. <laughs> that's not true. Um, that's not true. Um, I know it's your feature debut, you know, you co-wrote um, with your partner, Sarah. Um, so I just wondered if you could tell us a bit about the genesis of the whole thing, you know, how you first got the initial idea, um, what that process was like kind of writing it together and why this was a story you wanted to tell for, t tell for your feature debut. Well, I think we're both weirdly paranoid about technology and Alexas and things like that. And and I, I think every time something strange happens with, with our phones, you know, like we were talking about getting speech therapy for a little boy and um, something came up on the phone going, hey, speech therapist near you and that kind of stuff. It freaks us out the whole time and it happens to everybody. And it just... So, so basically what we wanted to do was we wanted to talk about that, these idea of these devices that we're letting into our homes just for the sake of convenience and just to make things slightly easier. It's, it doesn't really improve your life by that much. And, and the fact that you're giving up so much. And, and then we wanted to kind of go with the idea that these you know these these algorithms and things can manipulate you in a way that is kind of chess group grandmaster level and um then we so, so so it was about that really and we wanted to personify that in the form of a of a humanoid ai um and then we also love stalker thrillers from the like 90s stalker thrillers like hand that rocks the cradle and uh single white female uh, fatal attraction so we wanted to sort of have that that vibe as well so we sort of brought those two together hence tim <laughs> And kind of uh, your partner Sarah is a, a novelist, is that right? And so, and I know you've done stand-up comedy and things like that. How did you kind of bring your different, you know, influences um, and, and, and your different kind of attributes together to kind of put together the script? Um, I think, I don't know if we actually have very different attributes. <laughs> I think we're weirdly similar, uh, <laughs> which is probably why we can tolerate other each other through uh, through a marriage. Um, but we, uh, yeah. So, so I think we both have very similar kind of, you know, in, you know, instincts on plot. We're very both very sort of um, logical. I think we, I think we're a weird mix of logical and creative. We like she did law at university, I did philosophy, and I think those are both subjects where you can be a bit arty, but a bit, you know, a bit mathematical at the same time. So, so we kind of really wanted the plot to be really rigorous, but at the same time, you know, we really wanted this, the character side of it to be, you know, very believable and for it to all feel very human and justified. Because I think that's the, that's the danger when you're doing uh, something with a robot, that there's a good chance <laughs> that it will be ridiculous. So, so you wanted, so we really wanted to kind of ground it in relationships and, make people really care about the uh the characters in it rather than just you know hit them with some schlocky sort of uh you know action straight away and you've got such an amazing cast um that just all you know really capture all the different characters so well with Georgina and Mark and, and of course Eamon you know perhaps you know the most difficult role to take on kind of you know seeming like you're robotic but while you know slowly kind of gaining different um, aspects to his character as, as the kind of film goes on. So how did you decide on your cast and how did you work with them? Well, we just got, it's, it's been really interesting. So I've been an actor before and I've acted in things and um, just seeing it from the other side, you just, it's quite an eye opener. Just this dump of cast list that you get. It's just like, here's a hundred people for these three parts. And you're like, well, okay. But, but then it is also very, it's a very sort of, it's a lot more select cast list than than you uh than you think it would be you know it's it's there, there's there's this you know a lot of the same pe people occasionally came up for the same parts even it was like which i'm not saying they couldn't have played but it was uh you know you just go okay this is this is how it's gonna work but but actually when we saw Eamon um we would just uh yeah yeah we yeah he was he was about 
20, 25th on a list or something like that. And we just sort of went, ah. like, he's, he's got such an interesting striking face. And we watched a few clips of, of his and I was just like, this, this is the guy, you know, and, uh, and Sarah loved him as well. So we, so we just kind of, we were, you know, he, he was great. And then Georgina again, she, well, you know, she's, she's just an amazing actress. And they're, 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 they're all amazing, you know, and, um, you know, we watched her Black Mirror because we don't really watch Black Mirror, but we went back and watched that and we were like, okay, yeah, she's, she's fantastic. And, you know, and, um, then we uh, and then Mark we knew because we uh, from uh, Last Kingdom so so we'd actually uh, we're like we were looking for some we want someone wanted someone who was kind of charming and funny but at the same time had some depth and uh, we'd seen him be um, you know the the funny Irish character on Last Kingdom and we, we so we were very keen on him from that but then we just he's just, just and he's just been brilliant he's got so much depth to him as well it's nice to see i think there was a bit of a fear that he might be sort of too hench you know when 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 we put him on, but, but he's just been brilliant he's got so much you know depth and sensitivity which was so great because Eamon has to be so cold and you've just got this contrast bit between the two of them and uh so that so that worked perfectly and yeah but and, and i think georgina just you know held it all together in the middle with with she's i don't know she's just an amazing actress just really draws you in with her face the whole time and find you know I'd, I'd be watching the monitor with all of them and just find myself sort of leaning in the whole time when I should have just, just been working out there was a lamp in the wrong place <laughs> <laughs> and it also feels like the locations are very crucial and I'm always amazed at kind of it's it's the subtle parts isn't it of, of the sets so it needs to look like you know, a world that could believably be ours, but then there's these subtle things that are going to be different, and and particularly the house, you know, and and there is that kind of thing we associate with sort of horror and thriller of of the home, um, and almost something that can be, you know, you associate with some, a very affluent couple, you know, a very expensive house, you know, does it suddenly become a bit terrifying? Um, so how much were you kind of playing upon those? ideas and, and how did you find that location how did you find that house the, the house the house was yeah that was that was our main main issue because because really when we when we conceived of the film it's kind of a one location film it doesn't feel like it at all because we go outside a few times like enough for, for it to not really feel like that but I think when we shot we did we, we shot the whole thing in four weeks so we did three weeks in the house and one week other places you know so so it was um really vital that that was right so we actually we we were seeing all the kind of nice looking you know modern houses that we could afford it's very difficult to find to find one that actually works I think I don't know if there's not a lot of these houses in the UK or if it's just that they're a lot more expensive than our budget would allow <laughs> but um but yeah so so it, it took us it took us ages I and mean, we even then we were trying to you know the we had to make sure that we didn't have one where you know anything around it was visible or but then we also got you know so many scenes in you know and having all these different locations within the house it was just so important and just yeah so so I think we found a great one though I'm really really pleased with it and it was just it was it was so nice the bedrooms like you'll see in the in the film but the bedroom is amazing we put put a put a bath in there and you've got this view over this mm -hmm open field where there were wild horses sort of running around I don't think you could actually see any of the horses in the in the film but it was just such a great place because it had this real sense of isolation but at the same time felt ultra modern which is exactly what we needed really mm. so yeah it was it was it was it was tricky but we but we did I think we pulled it off in the end and um yeah without giving too much away I mean like what I love about it's sort of like taking, you know, like where where we start the film and then where we kind of end up. And I always think it's kind of like a filmmaker. It must be quite fun to sort of like lean into, you know, when things kind of escalate. Um, but I wonder, did you have like a favorite scene to shoot or were there any challenges along the way? Like what was your favorite bit? Oh, the whole thing was 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 uh, was incredibly challenging because we had so little, little time. You know, we can only do a couple of takes on a lot of things, and you know, is yeah, it was so it's really just trying to be as efficient as possible uh, because we just didn't have the money, we didn't have the the time really. That's that's why I realized I always thought budget was all about special effects and things, but it's really time is what you're buying and and the chance to do things a number of um, you know a number of times. But yeah, no, we we definitely had like we re were very very aware of the arc and that was one thing I had to really I think it was in, in a way the arc is more clear with um with fame and uh, for, sorry for Georgina and and Mark because they're human and you know they you can see their relationship progressing but having have, trying to keep the art for Eamon was was just a case of temperature really and just letting subtle bits of not humanity but sort of emotion uh come into it but also we were like we we knew that we wanted to um 
had a lot of ideas about where I wanted the music to go. So, so that was that that had a big sort of movement towards going. You know, it starts quite organic, and uh, there's there's bits of electronic in it. But then by the end, it's like full on sort of synth. You know, all, all the way through. You probably didn't need to hear that over the uh, over over Zoom. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, the uh, yes, and and just in terms of even even the the visuals, we 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 we, we kind of. Um, wanted to you know started off feeling very aspirational so it you know it, you know when they get to the house we really want people to go oh I'd like to live in a house like that and, and also and I think that was really important to us as well in terms of you know just going back to the location thing we really wanted to create a sort of very modern England and I think or you or, or Britain you know where where um where where it did feel aspirational, it didn't feel like we were either going sort of council estate kitchen sink or four weddings and a funeral posh people. You know, we wanted to create this sort of this sort of aspirational but attainable attainable Britain. I mean, not not in terms of the house. You know, they get given 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 that for, <laughs> for free by the uh, by the company. But um, but but just in terms of uh, you know like a a lifestyle that people would like to have and felt very modern and contemporary. But then as we went on, we wanted that to sort of we wanted we took the color out and sort of let that you know fade into a to a nightmare scenario <laughs> and what I was really thinking about as well is like of course there's such a, a tradition in film and tv of exploring kind of our relationship with technology um I was even thinking of things like the matrix you know get, ultimately that's AI gone, gone crazy things like black mirror and um, so, so you know they are on a spectrum perhaps of things that are kind of more grounded in our world and you know maybe just a little bit um more extreme or or heightened um, and then you know going all the way through to to something more um over the top but I think what's happening now you know like watching this film it's it's not as far away from us than it might have been, you know, even like Ex Machina, how many years ago that that film came out. Do you think that's also kind of tapping into something new that these things aren't ludicrous anymore? Like we AI, it's you know, Chat GBT, just within the space of what seems like six months, has just completely infiltrated so many aspects of, you know, whether it's filmmaking, whether it's writing, um, you know, whether it's journalism. So do you think that these things are just that bit closer now? So the terror in a way is closer. Yeah, well, I kind of I think there's a, a few points to that. The, the first one is, I don't think the world actually changes as much as we think it does. You know, like generally, like if you look at the world 20, 20 years ago and filmed it with modern cameras, it wouldn't look that different. The only difference would be that people were on, are on their phones more, <laughs> more now and a few of the design features are a bit different. You know, I just I just don't believe the world changes as quickly as we think it does. So actually just putting these te- bits of technology in, they're, they're almost islands to themselves. And actually 90% of our lives, although well, actually 90% of our lives is staring at the phones at the moment. But, uh, you know, but apart from that, the rest of our lives are pretty similar to how they would have been 20 years ago or something. So we wanted to really keep you know have that feeling that it did feel like now even though there's some things that are you know a bit a bit further forward but 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 also yeah I think I think you're right that this isn't that absurd a technology anymore you know and it is and and re- really because we were, we were working on two levels we want it to be you know the literal AI manservant but also the fact that it is what we have already in a way these 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 sort of uh this convenient AI you know working for us um, we did want it to feel like completely contemporary. And I, my only fear is that whether it dates <laughs> extremely quickly where people go, oh, it's in a self-driving car. Well, we have those. So uh, what's the big deal? You know, like, but so so it, I think it's, we, we wanted to have it sort of on the border between now and that technology coming in. Like, for example, when they first get in a self-driving car, they're like, oh, I'll, I'll never get used to these. You know, these these are so weird because because I think that's how it's going to be for about for a year or two when things like that come in. So it's it's got the it's I wanted it to feel like very near, very near future, you know, like it's on the boundary of just stepping into something new. But at the same time, it's our world, if you see what I mean. Mm. And what's your kind of personal feeling about these things like? if you think you would be going to be more disciplined about it, would you never have an Alexa? And would you never be using kind of like a, a smart home, like fully connected? Um, and do you think that people are sort of using it and taking it on responsibly? Or are we just sort of blindly accepting whatever's kind of put in our laps? Uh, definitely the latter. I, I, I'm i I'm a complete Luddite. We, we have like no nothing smart in our home. You know, we've got computers and phones and things, but like everything is done. You know, one of the, uh, the, do- the doorbells, the smart doorbells and things like, wouldn't touch them with a barge pole heating wouldn't touch them with a barge pole. I just I don't know I'm just scared of everything um but I but I think um 
yeah, I, 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 I feel people are letting things in a little bit too quick. I, you know, I just, I, I just, I just feel like there's, the gain is not quite as big as we think it is. You know, I, like for example, when you go to a, a website and, and it's say, will you, will you share your location? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And you, no thought about, about it. And, and, and it's, and I, I really, and what really worries me is, you know, things like I, I, I was reading something about, um, about uh, an algorithm that could work out when you were depressed, for example, by looking at your search history and then try and sell you more stuff. And it's just, of course, that's going to happen, you know, unless there's a, a ban on it. You know, there's there's just, you know, we think we're all individuals, but really when you look at us, you know, when you have the data of millions and millions and millions of people, of course, we're going to follow patterns. Um, and, you know, uh, so, so, so I, I don't think we're going to be able to avoid that manipulation. So the only way really is to sort of... Uh, Go and live in a in a in a tent. <laughs> That's why I'm advocating. Go and live in a tent and turn off everything and vaguely try and eat off the land. No, I'm not advocating that at all. But but it's it's yeah. I, I think we're we're rushing pretty pretty fast towards it. But I think the other thing that you you also raise in the film though as well is it's on the face of it can sometimes be something that is useful to us and aiding us in our lives. Um, but there might be one stated purpose for something, like you say, even when we give our data over in, a, in, in order to make something more convenient for us, what we're not thinking about is the corporation that sat behind that, that might have um, different motivations, whether that's profit, whether they want to use, you know, your data for something else. And, and, and there's that corporate greed um, or, you know, they don't have quite so, you know, like good good intentions when they're doing these things so that's also the balance as a consumer you have to also think like what what is my data being used for are, are could this take you know one step further than i'm expecting it to 100 percent, yeah and i, I think i think it's always going to be that you know no one no one is i don't know maybe maybe it's possible there could be a company that was really dedicated to making, making your life slightly easier but i doubt it you know and it's and, and it's just watch it you know watching as all these people go oh how do we actually earn money oh yeah we advertise to people you know then you kind of go yeah that's what it's that's what this is all about you know this is it's about making money and uh yeah and so we wanted to, we wanted to have that sort of human face of, of it and we've got nat nat parker playing uh juice who's the head of the company and is always cut, cutting corners and i think that's the thing it's it's Rather than focusing on it, does AI, AI become conscious and things like that, we wanted to focus on, you know, is it being rushed out? You know, are, are people cutting corners for the sake of it? You know, and and just um, and whether it's conscious or not, are the faults in it? Is it is are, are the un, unperceived consequences? You know, mm -hmm. so I think I think that's what sort of makes it maybe slightly you know different and parallel to to other AI films. There's there's a different sort of focus on. There's a, there's a hint of questions about consciousness, but it's really whether it's con conscious or not doesn't necessarily matter. It's just part of our lives and potentially dangerous. Mm. And so ultimately, what do you hope people take away from watching it? Because I do think, you know, like you were saying in the beginning, kind of like the idea of the stalker film and, you know, like, you know, being a thriller and you're just actually not sure what's going to happen next. But is it also a bit of a warning? You know, like, let, let's just be hold our horses a little bit and not just dump, jump straight head first into whatever technology is thrown at us. I think it's it's difficult, isn't it? Because because obviously it is a bit of a warning, but at the same time, at the same time, no, I, I really don't believe many people would change their <laughs> lifestyle because of a single film, you know? So it's really meant to just be really fun and entertaining, but we've got, you know, I think we, Sarah and I both can't help but want to put that underneath we want to talk about you know have some social commentary and, I, and you know a lot of genres genre stuff does that you know from from the you know Romero's zombie films to you know sci-fi sci-fi does it more explicitly usually but um yeah yeah so uh, of course we wanted that but I guess it's just sort of chipping away at you know people's fears as well you know because I think a lot of us do have this fear even though it's sort of very much hovering under our consciousness and um so to ex to a certain extent you're exploiting that and you know and trying to you you, you know f feed into you know what people have got a paranoia about but at the same time yeah I, it's I, it's it's tricky isn't it like really no one's gonna change their lives because of this this film <laughs> as much as as much as we might like them to maybe if it became like a massive cultural moment but i but but i i doubt <laughs> <laughs> I, I doubt the film is going to uh, uh, spell the downfall of AI. Yeah, um. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> um, but definitely make people think twice. Maybe unplug that Alexa. <laughs> <laughs>
but t- turn the camera off and on their laptops and things like that. Um, and so can you tell us what you might be working on next? Are you going to do another feature film together? Are you going to be working together doing something else? Yeah, so I'm, 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 we're kind of working on a couple of feature film scripts at the moment. We've just finished a kind of a family Christmas film. Um, we'll, we'll see if that, that works. Uh, but and then and another sci-fi thriller as well. But I've got and uh, you know and there's a period drama I want to do too. So I've got like lots of little projects. But it's kind of um it's kind of seeing what budget, how successful this this uh, this is, and what budget I get to work with next, really. And uh, so hopefully, if lots of people watch it, so if, yeah, tell people about the film if you're watching this, because I might get to make a bigger film rather than another one under a very small budget. <laughs> um yeah so so yeah lots of lots of lots of things like I'm I'm really sort of interested in mainly in making adult films but yeah the Christmas film was just a sort of uh feeling that, that I'm always disappointed by Christmas films generally mm-hmm. you know I, every, every you know everyone I've seen in the last 10 years since about Elf I've just gone this is not what I want so it, it was just I just want to make stuff that I'd like to see really you know and um yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, because most of, most of the cinema that I really like at the moment is probably not in the mainstream. It's probably more in the art house. But I like. I also really like mainstream cinema, so I'd like to sort of bring a bit of that art house sensibility into you know into, into mainstream c- cinema, but, but sort of uh, make films that are really fun to watch as well. We'll see. Mm. Definitely amazing. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with me. Um, can't wait for everyone else to see Tim and enjoy the rest of your holiday. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you so much. Nice Nice to meet you. you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.